We are currently in Jacksonville, Florida. Just waiting on a load. Actually, we just got a load. Going from here to San Antonio. I'm getting tired of the 10. I've been on it now for about three weeks, two weeks. So, tired of the 10. Life is a journey. Well, we're here. Hopefully, I'll, I'll be uh, loaded quickly. Well, I guess we're at the wrong dock. I came to the address that they gave us. And it's so friggin' hard to get a human on the phone. Everything's automated and you just get machines, you know, and you, you can talk to machines for days. If companies would just put signs shipping and receiving or shipping at one gate and receiving at the other one then we'd know where to go but they they can't invest fifty dollars in a sign if i had a company then one of the first things i'd do would be to get some signs put up not for just truck drivers but anybody that came to visit you know and I would do away with all automated phone systems I used to work for a company and I loved the president there I worked for him for about 10 years and he had the same philosophy no automated phone systems humans Well, they do have a sign over here, but no one answers this door either. All right, well, you're not going to believe this, but it's at yet a different warehouse. It's at their other warehouse at another place, and he gave me a map at least. People don't believe me when I just tell them these things. Uh, a dispatcher surely don't believe it. But I know you guys are truck drivers, so I know you know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but... All right, it's about two miles from here. I can't do a U-turn here, so I'm gonna have to do a backup. All right, I finally got the right dock. And the best thing of all is that it's only 11,000 pounds. And I... Uh, that makes me happy. Ching, 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 ching. That's the sound of money, if you don't understand that. I'm not being greedy, but I have to make a living too, so I'm happy. All right, well, our load is pretty simple. Straight across 10. Uh, if you can't make that, it's like the easiest trip there is. It's literally straight across him. So it's 
1,066 miles between Jacksonville and San Antonio, Texas. So as soon as they get done loading us, we'll be out of here and on our way. Well, it's a nice light load. You gotta love that. Whew, I'm hot. We're loaded and rolling. I just gotta pull forward and lock up the doors. And we'll actually be loading. I mean rolling. Get this uh, door sealed and then we gotta get some lunch. Okay, we're on our way. Florida to San Antonio.
301 in Jacksonville. All right, we got fuel, we got food, and we're ready to go. Onward to San Antonio. We are in Tallahassee, Florida. Gonna stop here for the night because I have paperwork and stuff to do today. So I think I'll just back in here. Hey everyone, this is the little dog and you're watching Adventures in Trucking with my friend, Indiana Jack. Well, it's raining here in uh, Tallahassee this morning. Not too bad, bad enough that everything's wet. We're gonna get rolling though. Listen to the wind as I'm rolling along the sound and I'm singing a song thinking about the darling as I'm going on down the line hey ho hey hey ho I got an old guitar on my back and I, I like to keep it in an old corn sack thinking about your darling as I'm going on down the line Alabama. I sure wish I had time. I'd like to tour the USS Alabama right over there. One of the great warships that's in mothballs now, but you can still go on it and tour it. There is room for truck parking over there. I've had friends that have gone over there and looked at it. It's pretty cool. When I come through Gulfport, Mississippi, I always stop at this Barnes & Noble, if I have time. Kind of like a rest break. Looking at, uh, reading books and stuff, buying books. Books are a, buy, a dying thing these days. Uh, paper books, anyway. You can buy them online. That's about it. Except for stores like Barnes & Noble. Actually, a perfect combination for a truck driver is books on tape or books that you can download and listen to them while you're driving. I do that quite a bit. to come to Gulfport all the time. But I don't get here that often. I have never heard a laundromat called a washateria. Maybe you have. I, 
I have it. Maybe they call it that here in, a, in this part of the country. Honey, we're going to go down to the Washateria and do some laundry. I've heard of a cafeteria. Everybody knows what a cafeteria is. Just not a laundry or a washateria. to stop because it looks like they have some cool food places. Even though I'm not really into all the Louisiana the foods the like right you guys right are. Rest. I'm not really a seafood eater. Crabs and lobsters. All that stuff. I'll eat it if I have to, but... One time I had never had a lobster. I was in... I was in New York on a, for a business meeting. And then I had to go up to Boston. And I went up to Boston just for hanging so out. This, for 72 miles. this was before I was in trucking. And I rented a car there in Boston and drove up to Portland, Maine just to have a lobster. And I forget the name of the place I went. It was right on the right in the bay there in Portland and had my first lobster. I haven't had one since. It just didn't do anything for me. Those good old Louisiana roads. Texarkana line Listen to the wind as I'm rolling along Whistling to the sound and I'm singing a song Thinking about you darling as I'm rolling on down the line I got a little girl way back home Hey, way down there in San Antonio Thinking about you darling as I'm rolling on down the line well, the last time we talked, we were in Louisiana, and we've now made it all the way to Texas, and I dropped off my load in San Antonio, and I drove down here, or up here to Temple, Texas, where I'm currently loading for none other than Reno, Nevada. So we're getting loaded right now. As soon as we get loaded, we'll be on our way to Reno. We'll be cutting through Texas, then New Mexico, and then... Arizona and then Nevada. So we'll be loading and ready to go shortly. Well, we got our paperwork done. You guys always want to know this stuff. We're at 43,722 pounds. I won't say anything. For me, it means, like, let's say you made $20 an hour at your job. 
But some days you came in and your boss said, well, you're only going to make $10 an hour today or for the next two days. That's what it's like for an owner-operator who's hauling heavy freight. Yes, he's still making money, but uh, to use a vague uh, example, if that's close. Instead of making $20, you're making $10. So that's why I always complain about the weight. And I think it's more like making $20 an hour, and then if it's a heavy load, you're making $5. Because that's how much fuel costs. Now, it's good that fuel's light, so I will say that. I mean, fuel is inexpensive right now, so that's helping me. And we're going to go ahead and, uh, since we couldn't get the axle weights there at that scale, we're going to go back to another scale and weigh our axles. Because we're going through uh, two states that are hostile to trucks, and that would be Arizona miles and New Mexico. And when I say hostile to trucks, I mean they're unforgiving. I mean, you, if you're overweight, you get a big ticket. HK Dodge and Lou, TX363 Lou. So, to be on the safe side, I'll spend the $15 that comes out of my pocket and get the truck weighed properly. Well, we're here at the scale and. Uh, trying to get turned around. And I don't know what that guy's doing. He's talking to his friend. just have to do it the hard way. On Trucker Talk Radio, we're always talking about how drivers are inconsiderate. And the hosts never know what that means, of course, and they just say, oh, really? But that's what that means when drivers just stop in the middle and want to just get out and talk to their friend. When they're holding up a whole line of other folks. So that's a good example of that. But soon, we'll be on this scale and on our way, <laughs> and we won't have to deal with all these four-wheelers, people like that guy. <laughs> Man, once again, I pull forward a little bit and get my rear wheels exactly the right way. First way or reway? Yeah, first way. Truck number? 147. 
All right, you can pull off now. Come in. Thank you. All right, they got our weights. So now we have to go in and get the weight ticket. Find out how overweight we are on our axles. Maybe we'll be just right. All right, our weights are good. That's our weight, steer axle, drive axle, and then our trailer axle. So we're a little heavy up front, but I could even get some fuel. I have a half a tank, so we're good to go. All right, well, we're loaded and rolling. What makes the first part of this trip miserable? Oh, the pain and misery. is that we're going to be going on uh, a little road in going through Texas up to Clovis, New Mexico. And you know, even in Texas, even the smallest of roads usually are pretty good. Except for the little towns that you have to go through and being so heavy, that's what makes it miserable. So we're going to make the best of it. We've come all the way from Florida. You guys have really come a long way. And we're going to go all the way to Reno, Nevada. One thing I hear over and over from truckers is how, how much disdain they have for dispatchers. Because the dispatchers don't know what we go through. And they think, oh, we're just merrily rolling down the road. I used to have a division manager. Continue on this road for 3.8 miles. That he would watch my little trucking films and every time he got a new dispatcher he would show them a couple of them so that they could see what you and I as truckers go through and he'd have a little meeting and have them gather in his office and show them and uh, it would always help the dispatcher to have a little bit more of an understanding of what a truck driver goes through But he's not in my division anymore, so. And I'm trying to get up this hill. <laughs> well, we're getting out of this all substation here in Comanche. since we left Temple this morning. Take exit 242, Hopkins Road, and then turn right at 0 0.3 miles. Well, we're on 20. I haven't seen one fracking truck. 
those of you who have uh, been on 20 with me before, you know that I uh, turn right on count zero at one forty two and then complain about them quite the right a bit. Side in three hundred feet. But as, even though I complain about them, I'm concerned. Because that's a lot of business that, you know, a lot of truckers are out of work because there's not any fracking going on. All of these truck stops that they built for us and for all the fracking trucks, they don't need them now. Fracking might come back. You have arrived at your destination on the right side. Lumps travel stop number 475. What is a fracking truck, you ask? It's a truck that uh, could be a sand truck. Oh, there, there's one. It could be a water truck. There are a few, but nothing like what there were. Just a concern. Well, we're here at Love's. Try to find a place to park. I don't think we'll have any problem. My truck is tilted like that just because of how my truck tanks are I might run out of fuel because I only have 31 gallons but if I idled all night that would go down probably to 15 gallons or even lower and maybe even run out because of the angle of my truck whereas if I my angle is that way then I'm gonna have probably more gallons than when I start out it's just how you'd have to know where the where the fuel drains into in the tank. It's complicated to, to try to explain that to you, but trust me, I know guys that uh, because of the angle of their truck, when they wake up in the morning, they don't have any fuel, and they barely have enough to get to the fuel islands, if they have any at all. So that's why I switched. Long story for very little meaning but it has meaning to me and other truckers who know what I'm talking about and they have the same issue the the solution would be just to go get more fuel right now but I want to get fuel in the morning so because I'm a morning person plus they say a crook Somebody that wants to siphon the fuel out of your tanks, if you don't fuel in the night, if you wait until the morning, if he tries to siphon your fuel, then there won't be much fuel in there for him to steal. So that's another reason. time I ran in there 
to get some food and come back out to the truck just because of how my truck leveled off and how it is now I have 61 gallons of fuel so that's what I'm talking about good morning I'm officially awake it's 3:45 a.m. I'm usually a morning person, but I am not one today. <laughs> we'll be hitting Lubbock next, Lubbock, Texas. So as soon as we get done fueling here, we'll be on our way. Lubbock, then Clovis, to, uh, New Mexico, then uh, we'll be hitting 40. Man cannot live without coffee. about Clovis is it's uh, well this particular loves it's not a cookie cutter loves it's different from all the rest so I like unique things and that's what this uh, particular loves is unique I don't like about Clovis. The last time I came through here anyway, they have a truck route. And you have to go way around the city. It's, I think it's still here. I was through here six months ago when they had it, so we'll see shortly. And it, it's not so bad if you're light, but it's one of those truck routes that start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, and when you're heavy, that's not too fun. Some truck routes are good because they're like a freeway going around the city, but not this one. truck route but look at straight ahead all that construction I'm kind of glad I don't have to go through all that construction so. It's a scary railroad track because it's so busy and you know there's a train coming at any time. Oh, there's the Rocky Mountain Cummins too. In a quarter mile, hey, turn right on East Brady Avenue, NM 270. Turn right on 
East Brady Avenue, NM270. I don't think Rand McNally watches these, but if they do, Rand McNally, you should know, all trucks are required to take the truck route around this city. In one mile, turn right on South Prince Street, US 70. And it keeps trying to take me back to the main 84 route, but I'm not allowed to follow what Rand McNally says. So. if you are not Rand McNally watching this, if you guys are the kind of guys that write Rand McNally all the time, write him and tell them this, that there's a truck route around Clovis, New Mexico. Because they certainly don't have it in their database. We are now in Santa Rosa. In a quarter mile, take the entrance to the left on I-40 West. Getting off of 84 and merging on to 40 up here. Take the entrance to the left on I-40 West. straight ahead there, that's old route 66. And our next major town is Albuquerque. I don't think I'm going to stop there. Adventures in Trucking with Indiana Jack. We're here in Gallup, New Mexico. And I think the last time I was here with you guys was last winter for on the trip by uh, the narrow streets of New Jersey. If you haven't seen that film, it is one of my favorites. Uh, just because I liked the trip. It had a lot of action to it for me because of the ice and the storms. And then when I got there, the fiasco in New Jersey. So, but coming here again reminded me of that. We're going to stop here for the night in Gallup, New Mexico at this uh, Walmart. stayed here a couple months ago, yeah, maybe a month ago, and I was bothered all night by, I think it was an Indian guy knocking on my door. Then I'd get up and look, and they'd be gone. That happened a few times. It kept me awake all night. So I said I'd never stay here again. So I just hope they don't do that again. But I stayed way down here at the end. And uh, that might have been why. Well good, there's a lot of parking here today. Usually this is all solid and full of trucks.
always encourage the truckers at all Walmarts, but especially one like this where they let us park, to make sure that uh, you clean up your own trash. I'm going to park up here. Near the mosquito ponds. <laughs> I have a story about mosquitoes. like a good place. Here we are, Gallup, New Mexico. I got a few things here in Walmart and I'm calling it a night here in Gallup. So until the morning when we get up early, get rolling, I will see you then. Good morning. I just did a walk around of the truck. And she's good to go. Last week, I had a, an air leak that was really, really getting bad. And it was in the air dryer, so I replaced my air dryer, and that, that took care of everything. So, the air uh, fills right up. I could even pass a full-on inspection now. And the reason I say that is because at this elevation, Usually it would take my truck forever to build up air in the morning. I'd have to get it way up there in the RPMs to fill up the air. Now it does it by itself, so... We're on our way. Let's get rolling. Well, we're going to be stopping shortly. Uh, i got to get my windshields cleaned went through a, like a bug storm back there. So I'm going to 
going to be spending some time making the uh, windshields what they should be clear. I don't know if you can see, but the bees are literally swarming the top of my truck. They don't like it that their cousins are smeared all over the top of the truck. Not such a good love if you don't like stairs. Well, we have a nice clean windshield. And we're getting out of this loves here in Williams. It's one of the newest loves. Williams, Arizona. It's 0.2 miles take the entrance to the red on I-40 West AC 89 South. And tonight our goal is to make it to Area 51 in Nevada, which is where all the aliens are. Take the entrance to the right on I-40 West AC 89 South. And it's where they let off the, uh, tested the, some of the first atom bombs. So, we'll be doing that tonight in Nevada. Well, for those of you who are following along on the map, as many of you write me and tell me you are, this is where we turn north off of Inland 40. Line, to the right on US 93 as 68 Bill. And head north to Las Vegas on 93. Or what as they call it, the future Route 11. Hoover, Hoover Dam and into Las Vegas. I always like Kingman. It's so uh, geological. A lot of fault lines running through here. Back there you can tell how the mountains cut, how the fault line is Wow, my windshield wipers just went off all by themselves. I didn't do anything. That's scary. And that may have to do with where we're stopping tonight. Which is Area 51. I'm going to have to get a foil hat on. Because maybe the aliens had something to do with my windshield wipers coming on all by themselves. I can't turn right here except on a green arrow. There's a truck next to us called Broadway Express. And they haul shows around. Either like bands or movie sets. them and find out what they haul. The only reason I don't do that, because 
I have an interest in bands, just like you do, or music, or the entertainment industry, but those guys, when a show's over at, what, 11 o'clock at night or something, they're the, they have to pack up the truck and then drive all night. And I think you know my opinion on that. <laughs> that I would not, that would not mesh with me. So you, whenever you see those trucks, make sure you congratulate them on what they do. Now, if they could sleep until the morning, like 3.30 in the morning, or four, that's when I wake up. I, I could really love that job. Climbing the hill up here, and then it's pretty flat all the way to Las Vegas. If you're following along on the map, we're on 95, shooting up to Reno. Sometimes I complain about freeways and highways being desolate. Well, this is the ultimate de desolate highway. If you break down in the middle of this highway, you're truly screwed. Unless you have lots of I do, I have my emergency food. Well, we're here at Area 51. Not only is there a truck stop here, but there's a brothel here too. That's why this place is so popular. Forget the space aliens and the atom bombs. Yes, there are space aliens here. I have to make a decision on whether to stay here or go to Tonopah. I have exactly enough hours to get to Tonopah. So, but I'm not really sure about the accommodations in Tonopah. Now, if you look just over that way, is the uh, Nevada test site where they tested the one of the first atom bombs here in Nevada and if you look on Google Maps you can see the actual big create uh, crater that it made so it's kind of interesting I would imagine the government doesn't want you in area 51 not because of space aliens but because of radiation that might be still at that site I'm not really sure uh, I had a friend who said they said that they tried to drive that way on some little road and that uh, the government followed them in a black uh, you know in a black car or black helicopter something black and, and you know made them turn around I don't know if that's true but I've heard those kind of stories we're here at area 51 in Nevada an executive decision once again that I'm going to go ahead and try to make it to Tonopah and uh, I have stayed in a dirt lot there before that has a restaurant and I can get something to eat there 
it's either there or here. And uh, so, by golly, if if there's no construction, we won't go over in our hours. If there's construction. Might go a few minutes over on the logs, but it is interesting out here just because of all of the claims. And the, if you go that way, it's Death Valley, of course. I've been there a few times, not in a truck. This place looks good. Do you concur? I think we should stop here. You know, why push it? This place has everything. I've come this way about three or four times. Never, never knew about this. Now I know, so I won't worry about some place to stay halfway between Reno and Vegas. Good night. All right, well, we got our coffee. It's good coffee too. I'm not. I'm not uh, unhappy with where I chose to stay last night. But had I known that this was here, I probably would have stayed here. Even though I would have been close on my hours. I knew it was here, but I actually wanted to stay possibly at the Burger King uh, truck stop, which is a Chevron, just up the way, but they don't have truck parking there, so not because it's Burger King, but just because you look at this place on Google Maps, it doesn't look as accommodating as the other one. But we're in Tonopah. Early morning. Some guy wrote me on, on uh, YouTube and said, why don't you ever say what time it is? I don't know why he would want to know that, but for you, whoever you are, it's 6.25 a.m. And we can only go 25 miles an hour here.
Hawthorne, Nevada. Yeah. And you know what? They have a brand new truck stop here. So whenever there's a brand new truck stop, I like that. So not just that same old one that was so boring across the street. Now they have a new truck stop that has a port of subs. Let's look, let's check it out. Pretty nice truck stop. You know, just for a quick in and out cup of coffee. So we just have about two more hours till we hit Reno. enough for this break. Let's see if we can go catch that cab over. I know if we were Burt Reynolds we could. The guy in that cab over, he's on paper logs, he told me, so he doesn't have to worry about all the, the things. Right up, Freedom Road, ND 362, and then slight ride at 250 feet. All the things that you and I have to worry about. In a way, the old timers have, have an advantage over us that have to use electronic logs. truck parking and then the old shell of it up here that I was telling you Slide about. Right on US 95. For those of you who are interested in things like I am. Other than this just being an army. Continue on this road for 71 miles. Arms Depot. It's also where the main ingredient for Sherman Williams paint is mined at. And I, I know you guys are going to know what that ingredient is and I forgot the name of it. So you see nothing but Sherman Williams trucks along this route. And for those of you in other countries who don't know what Sherman Williams is, it's a large paint company here in the United States. In fact, my brother used to work for them and he told me this was years ago that they are the largest suppliers of the paint that you see on our highways that paint the roads, the lines in the roads. So they are connected to trucking.
do to trucking. Don't don't do that. He's probably changing his underwear as well as the car that was coming straight to him. Well, if you're following along on the map, we're at M. Fallon here in Nevada. Gotta be turning left up here on 50. Speed warning. towns have 25 mile an hour speed limits. They want your money, man. Well, we've made it all the way to Reno, Nevada. Four sparks. says Sparks, but their address is actually a different address. It's neither of those, so. In 300 feet, make a U-turn if possible. They can be a little bit snippy here, depending on the guard that you get, so we'll have to be, put our friendly hat on. Of course they don't want it here. So I have to go to another place. Of course. Well, we're dropping her off here. Gonna let her rest a bit. We've had quite a trip, you know, all the way from Florida to here. Whew. I know, I could use a break. I could really use a break from that guy's uh, sound. Those horns make drive me crazy. Well, we dropped off everything here in Reno, Nevada. Like I said a minute ago, I appreciate you watching. All the way from Florida to Reno, Nevada. Hey, I don't ask many things from you guys, but I would like one thing. If you get a chance, before you leave the channel today, click the button that says subscribe and also that says email notification. That way, every time I put a film out, it'll come right to your inbox in your email and you'll know that you have a new one there. That's all that I'd like you to do. Otherwise, I have no way to know if anybody's watching or if anybody's subscribed to my channel, I sure would appreciate that. Remember, trucking's an adventure. Life is a journey. I'm Indiana Jack, and we will see you next time.